welcome everyone. My name is Eltamar and we are going to be beginning a let's play of Shadowrun Dragonfall. This is a successor to Shadowrun Returns and in my opinion is better in pretty much every way. The gameplay is improved, the storyline is really really good, the writing is excellent. Basically it is it took everything that made Shadowrun Returns great and made it even better. That's just my personal opinion, so we're gonna get started right away here. We're gonna go with a new game, we're gonna play the Shadowrun Dragonfall Director's Cut. We'll play on hard mode because it sounds like a good amount of challenge without being too annoyingly hard. We are going to be playing a... A who man. And we are going to play a... What? We could try a rigger or... We could be a physical adept. Now nah, let's be a street samurai. I like being a gunner in these type of games. We need to find a decent... They all kind of look weird. I guess they are shadow runners. I like that pitch. That one's good. Alright, we're gonna go with that guy. Sure, good enough. Continue to stats. I know how karma works. Thank you very much. We're going to be using ranged combat, and our gun of choice is going to be the rifle. So we should probably grab some skill in that. We have nine karma to spend, and now after get oops. now after getting up to full auto, we have three karma left. We can get more dodge, but I don't think we need more dodge. What do we have for skills that we can get rid of? Quickness is very important, so we'll leave that. Body is important to not die. We can't lower our intelligence, we can't lower our charisma, we can't lower our willpower. So pretty much what we have is... Actually wait, we have an extra strength. Do not need the extra strength. We could get another quickness. Which is kind of useful. Our top quickness is 9. Which should be just fine for all the skills we want to get. Pistols are also fun to use. We could use pistols instead of rifles, but at the same time... I think rifles are superior in terms of firepower. Well, obviously. So I think that's what we'll go with. We'll go with some quickness, range combat 3, rifles 3, or do we want to go with range combat... 4. Yeah, let's go with range combat 4 and... We can't get rifle 4, but... Yeah, that'll be fine. I think that's good. Uh, our background is going to be... Corporate. And we are Eltamar, of course. As always, life was good. Easy jobs, regular pay, a reliable crew. But things went south and you had to drop off the grid. Put a bullet in the past, start somewhere new. The promise of opportunity and anonymity draws you to the free city of Berlin, the Flux State, a grand experiment in social order. Corporations tread carefully here. Even the great dragon Lofweir only has so much sway in the constantly evolving power structure of Berlin. A perfect place for a savvy shadowrunner to disappear and begin anew. And as luck would have it, home to your old partner in crime, Monica Schaefer. It's her third run in Monica, or with Monica and her team, an old castle holdfast. One hour east of Berlin, perched on a hill overlooking the countryside. The job is a standard smash and grab. Crack the vault, grab the data, get out in one piece. A mediocre payday, but work is work. As the team gathers for Monica's pre-run briefing, you pause to take in your surroundings. The Harfeld Manor, 2054, one hour east of Berlin. It's only a little over 30 years from now. The estate grounds are silent, save for the faint whistling of the wind. Your team gathers near a side entrance to the old castle holdfast, cloaked in darkness. The night is peaceful. You know it won't last. You know it for what it is, a pleasant illusion that will be shattered at the sound of a first gunshot. Listen up folks, Monica Schaefer, you ran with her back in the day, watched her get her first data jack, now she's your team leader, and a dreck hot decker to boot. We're on a tight timetable. I want to enter the estate, find the basement, open the data vault, extract the files, and bolt. Ten minutes, top to bottom. Trying to get home in time for Wyrm talk, love? Dietrich, shaman, the old man of the team. He smiles at her, his facial tattoos writhing in the moonlight. 
Monica's eyes twinkle with mischief. Maybe? How many times have I told you? You can't trust anything that comes out of a dragon's mouth. That trid trash will rot your brain. She grins. It's educational. Besides, this should be a milk run. Security is supposed to be light, a few automatic weapons, no armor. With a little luck, they'll never know we were here. I'll watch your back all the same. Monica's smile returns, more wistful this time. The moonlight catches her face at a strange angle. Just like old times, eh, Altamar? Milk run or not, we should be careful. Glory. Razor clawed street samurai. Her voice is cold and neutral. Her expression placid. They may only be private security, but their bullets don't know that. I can patch you up if I have to, but I'd rather not have to. You people need to relax. We're professionals, remember? Monica raises her arm and speaks into her wrist mounted calm link. A darkened face shimmers on the view screen. Iger, are you in position? The calm link crackles, and the response comes back low and soft. Softer than you'd expect from a troll. Affirmative. The alarm lines have been cut, and I have a clear line of fire on the estate service entrance. When you exit the building, the path will be clear. Excellent, thank you, Iger. Just doing my job. Iger out. The calm link goes dark. Monica winks at you as she drops her arm. See? We're professionals. Alright, people, enough chatter. Our client wants the data from the vault, so we get him the data from the vault. Quick, quiet, and quick. You said quick twice. She grins. Worm talk is on tonight. Glory raises an eyebrow. Slightly. I told you. It's educational. And now we get our stuff and head in. Let's see what we got for weapons. Let's grab a weapon, first of all. We're gonna grab the rifle. And the rest of our kit, which includes a Fichetti uh, frag grenade and a basic med kit. Both important things. Uh, let's take a look at our weapons really quickly. So we are using an AK-97, the most common assault rifle in the world. Does some decent damage. Alright, let's roll out with our team. Doesn't look like there's anything to click on. There's a door we can open. I'm gonna quickly sneak around the side here. There's nothing of note. Okay, I guess we're going in. We're gonna enter the manor. There's a T-Rex there. A private museum. The owner of this estate must have money to burn. A variety of remarkably well-preserved Slavic artifacts. The complete skeleton of a theropod dinosaur. It appears to be genuine. The vase in this case looks both very old and very valuable. The fine scrollwork of lapis and gold leaf decorates its exterior, and the interior shimmers with the organic beauty of abalone shell. Your fixer could probably move this thing in a heartbeat. Can't help but notice that the glass encasing, it looks awfully flimsy. Alright, base, you're coming with me. As you draw your arm back to smash the glass, Dietrich catches it. His gnarled hand tightens around your wrist. Not a smart move, Kleiner. We've got a job to do, and hauling a great big vase around isn't part of it. Dietrich offers you a toothy grin. Unless the vase figured into your plans to complete the mission somehow. Did you have a vase-oriented strategy I was unaware of? I was thinking we could use it to smuggle Monica into the data vault. Dietrich stifles a chuckle. An excellent plan, Altamar. I support it fully. We should get moving, though. We mustn't keep the others waiting. I like Dietrich. He's a good guy. He stopped me from doing the dumb. The cask in this display case is decorated with ivory or inlay panels of ivory scrimshaw. Alright, we're in a big room. It has a weird room divider. Looks vaguely oriental in origin, but you can't be 100% sure about that. There's also what I'm assuming is a statue of Alexander the Great, or something along those lines. What the hell? Oh, there's a dude. I know how to use turn-based combat, thank you. Let's go shoot this dude. 68% is kind of a bad chance to hit, but we got him anyways. Get to some cover. We might take a shot from this guy, but we'll see. Security alert, response plan, Quebec 6, matrix operations locked, HTR team responding. Well, it's over at the door at least. Um, we're not going to be able to get to cover and shoot at the same time, so we'll just get to cover at least. He'll be able to throw a dagger at least, but still. Holy crap, that actually did a lot of damage for a dagger. 
Where are you going? Oh, Beatrick, no. One guy dead. All right, we're going to maneuver our people a little bit. But we're not going to go into the next room yet. Because those guys are coming in. I should have gone to cover. In retrospect, this was a terrible place to stand. I guess I'll go one turn to there and then shoot. How did I miss? 74%, come on. Um, 50%. Of course, the 50% shot worked just fine. Also, this is garbage cover. I don't think it's actually even cover. Missed. Uh, knife throwy dude is going to... Move up, I think. Oops. How do I deselect the skill? There we go. Yeah, we'll take a shot for that. I knew that was going to happen. Luckily, that worked out okay. I'm going to get to this cover here. The dragon statue does offer partial cover at least. She's just standing right in the middle of the floor like an idiot. Like I was just a second ago. I missed with all five shots. Super. God, she sucks at everything. There we go. There we go. One person dead. Shotgunner didn't do anything. That guy took some damage finally. There we go. Everything's fine. Everyone healed a little bit. There's nothing to loot, by the way. Usually in the game. Usually you get all your loot at the end of the mission. Uh, there are some data jacks like this one, for example. Select a decorative, or decorative jack in. It's going to be Monica. She has an erosion level 2, medic level 2, suppression level 2, and a blaster level 2. And she's heading into the world. So, this is the Matrix. Not to be confused with the movie The Matrix, but it is a uh, The Matrix. And in the Matrix, you can summon things. There's something over there, I'm not sure what though. Anyways, we have one point left to go. Let's use Blaster Level 2. Deal some damage to the White IC. Our Assassin Drone might take a little bit of damage here, or not. That was weird. Okay. Let's keep that one damaged. And we don't need to heal. Not sure if that'll kill it or not. Let's finish that one off. Oh, we didn't even finish that one off. Oh, come on, dude. There we go. That one's still alive. We're gonna take a little bit of IP damage. We need to come up a little bit. And we'll move our assassin bot up. There's probably going to be another bot here somewhere. Let's move our assassin first. Yep, there we go. There's another one right there. Uh, so the difference between white ICs and... Um, I think the other ones are black or red ICs. The other kind, the spiky looking ones, can deal real life damage to you, so they'll deal damage to the actual character. Whereas these ones can only just knock you out of the matrix. Alright, we got payday data, or pay data, antiquities delivery schedule. I'm not seeing any more enemies, I don't know why we're stuck in turn based combat, but whatever, let's get out of here. We got the data store, that's all we need. We can't do anything else in here. And now we're moving on. Let's quick save, F5. Can't save all in action, there we go. All right, yeah, F5 is quick save, good. I hear doors opening. There's at least one guy with a gun there. 
there's at least four guys with guns there. We did hit him, which is nice. We'll get Monica up with her gun here. Find this statue. Um, the chairs offer partial cover as well, so we'll do that. Because why not? Alright, this is a pretty good formation. Maybe we'll be able to summon a thing. I think we can summon things from bones, if I'm not mistaken, with shamans. Alright, so... We can try and mow down that security guard. Which we did. We can try and mow down that security guard. Which we also did. We're doing wonderful, this is going really well. Um, moving up to here. Try and get a little bit better line of fire on that guy, but... Not much. Now. We've summoned a terrifying creature. Which only has one AP. No, my weird monstrosity. Don't hurt him. He just a boy. Oops, what did I do? Oh, I switched guns. It's weird because one to four and whatever doesn't correspond with that at all. I need to move to shoot that guy. That's full cover. Alright, we're gonna go with the half cover there. She won't get a shot off this turn, but she will. Two hole damage. Excellent. Good job. The range on throwing weapons is not ideal. Oh, right. We can use AP to... They can try and escape our control. They also do a hell of a lot of damage. Holy crap. That is terrifying. If it turns on me, I might die. We won the fight, and the summon went away, so we don't have to worry about trying to control it anymore. The summon, however, did some terrifying amount of damage, and I'm glad it didn't turn on us. We were to transition to a new location. Continue? Sure, absolutely. So far, so good. If your skirmish with security set off any alarms, you didn't hear them. Monica leads the rest of the team downwards into the basement of the Harfeld Manor. Your payday is waiting. The data vault lies ahead. Here we go. Dietrich eyes the door, then turns to Monica. That's a big freaking vault, Liefshin. Bigger than on the schematic. The schematic didn't have a date our client may have had old intel. Still, our instructions were clear. The data we're looking for should be just on the other side of this door. Monica combs a hand through her hair, parting it to reveal the black plastic sheath of her data jack. A quick jaunt into the matrix, a little digital hand waving, and I'll have this thing wide open. You're back. A burst of static crackles through the tiny speaker on Monica's comm link. Iger, still in position outside the estate. Hold on, Monica. Who's in charge while well, you're jacked in? Monica rolls her eyes. Dietrich fixes his stare intently on the vault door. Glory looks cold and distant, just as she always does. We've been through this before, Iger, where you're not in the KSK anymore, and that chain of command nonsense doesn't fly in the shadows. We don't need rules and regulations to guide us. The same principles that apply to the Flux State. Please, spare me the lecture. Your politics have nothing to do with this. Best get used to it, Iger love. She sighs. Look, it's a simple question. Years of experience tell me that it needs an answer. I, I guess right, Monica. We should have a second in command, just in case. Monica stares at you for a moment, clearly irritated. Then that twinkle appears in her eye again. She smiles at you as she speaks into her calm link. Very well. We'll do this one Iger's way. While I'm jacked in, Eltimore is in charge. There's a pause, then Iger's voice crackles out the calm link again. Eltimore, did I hear you right? You're putting the rookie in command? I'm no rookie, Iger, and you know it. Monica cuts in, still smiling. You heard what I said, Iger. This is ridiculous. I know that this is a joke to you, Monica, but I'm telling you. Iger, Monica's tone is all business. Evidently, she has heard enough. The decision is made. You have your answer. Acknowledged. Without another word, Iger's image flickers and fades from Monica's communicator. Sorry about that. Iger can be inflexible, the legacy of a long military career. But she knows what she's doing, and she means well. It's a legit concern. She hardly knows me. Monica's eyes narrow. There's a thin line between concern and insubordination. You let me know if she crosses it. Okay, enough chatter, let's get this done. Monica turns towards the door, fingers poised on the controls of her cyberdeck, and then glances back at you with a grin. See you on the other side. 
That could be foreboding. Then she punches it, projecting her consciousness into the cyberspace, her fingers harmonizing in the smooth rhythmic staccato that only an expert decker can achieve. Oh no! Without warning, Monica's back arches violently and her head jerks back, silencing her terrible screams. Muscle spasms ripple through her face and her jaw snaps shut, sending a mist of uh, blood spraying from between her teeth. You look down to see a pink nub of flesh hit the floor, the tip of her tongue. The room explodes into action. Glory leaps towards Monica, her hand outstretched to yank the cord from the data jack. Heatrix surges forward to wrap the team's fallen decker in a bear hug, holding her against the convulsions that rack her body. With Monica's unearthly scream still ringing sharply in your head, you're only dimly aware of the door slamming shut behind you. I'll help Glory pull the plug on Monica's data jack. While Glory holds Monica's head steady, you snatch the cord that connects Monica's data jack to her cyber deck. Without a moment's hesitation, you give a solid yank, and the cord comes free. A wisp of oily blue smoke traces its way from her data jack to the ceiling. The commingled sense of char- yeah, sense of charred meat and ozone fill the air. You've seen the effects of biofeedback before, but nothing like this. Suddenly, Monica's eyes flutter open, muscle tremors continue to distort her face, and blood oozes between her lips. You see the muscles in her jaw tensing and the look of concentration in her eyes. She's struggling to speak. Tell me, Monica, what are you trying to say? Slowly, painfully, Monica wrestles her jaw open. The blood welled up in her mouth comes pouring out in a slick, covering her chest. She expels a thick, guttural sound that might be a word. Satisfied, she closes her eyes and forces her mouth to make the shape she needs. F fear With an effort, Monica opens her eyes again and meets yours. You see pain and fear in her gaze, and something else. Hope? Fear swing. A sudden spasm jerks, as Monica, jerks Monica's head back again. She grunts, then her chin drops to her chest, and her head lolls to one side. Her eyes fix on an object in the next room, a computer terminal. The soft light of a cursor blinks in its recessed screen. Slowly, she attempts to speak again, but the only sound that emerges is a long, strangled croak. A look of resignation watches over Monica's face, and she stops fighting. Her gorse slick jaw goes slack, and she dies. Oh damn, there's more security. At least two. Monica, no, this can't be happening, this can't be it. I think that it is basically it for her. Let's make sure we hit that guy, 10 damage. Uh, one turn to get to cover here, which is kind of nice. And we don't have a line of sight to that guy, so we're going to shoot his partner, hopefully. We did. Good. Um, There's almost no way for him to get to any sort of decent cover in one turn, so he's going for the two. We might take a shot from this. But we'll see. You know, we should use full auto and just mow someone down. Or miss every single shot. Excellent. We're well on our way. At least she hit it once. This guy's almost dead. I could go for cover here and then shoot that guy in the back, which is what I think I'm going to do. All right, let's try this again. There we go. Reloading gun, and we're gonna go for the terminal. MCPOS building maintenance software version 1.01 .01, command line interface internal memory checksum invalid. Altamar, 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 Altamar. The terminal is printing your name out over and over again. Altamar, you better get over here. We can summon a spirit from that thing, so that's kind of nice. Beatrix scans the room nervously. They've sealed the door behind us. We've got to find another way out of here. What are you doing? Monica was trying to tell me something about this terminal. It must be important. Well, any ideas? Something tells me we're going to have more company soon. I don't know yet. Watch my back while I figure this out. Text continues to scroll down the terminal screen. The problem has been we already did that. Ultimate. Hit the Y key. Processing request 0% complete. As you watch the number on the screen slowly begins to climb. This is going to take a while. You glance down at a second screen to see that the facility is on high alert. In place of a simple data vault, it seems you assembled into some kind of under massive underground complex. 
A map of the Holdfast grounds indicate that security forces are en route from multiple angles. The doors currently being rebooted by the system's restore process are flashing a dull red. If you're reading this display correctly, the only exit from this room is the Holdfast's old servant's entrance on the western side of the building. At that moment, Iger's image winks onto your comlink with a crackling sound. The image is grainy, flickering in and out. What's going on down? What's going on down there, rookie? Talk to me. Monica's down, Iger. The vault was a setup. What? I'm sorry, Iger. We couldn't save her. Now we have to get out of here. Look for an old servant's entrance to the west of the main grounds. We'll run away with you there. Iger's silence is thick, but when she finally responds, her tone is professional. Roger that. She cuts out without another word. Glory turns to face you, her movements smooth and robotic. Her voice comes out in a frosty monotone. What's the play out tomorrow? Our escape route will open in a minute. We hold tight till then. By hold tight, you mean sit here and fry anyone who comes to the door, don't you? Pretty much, yeah. Dietrich's pained expression twists into a mask of hate. His hands begin to glow with primal energy. I can do that. I thought so. When the door locks his arm, we make a break for it. Until then, we make them pay for Monica. Dietrich and Glory nod in agreement. I'm out of ammo, I need to reload. And find some cover, but I don't know where. I guess here? Hope no one comes to that door, because that's gonna suck if they do. I need you to be in cover here too. And then he can go to cover there. Or I can go to cover there, I should say. There are things coming from behind us. There's at least one automated security drone. I wonder if it would be better off to set up over here somewhere. Like, that's pretty good cover. That table's not bad. Actually, Dietrich should have been there. Damn. Because he could be closer to the summon window. If we get another turn, we'll swap those two around. We have a grenade, don't we? Our range really sucks on our grenade. Okay, we'll wait. In the meantime, we'll just open fire. One dead. I am going to switch their positions, I think. Ah, uh, you know what, it's fine. Good shot. He can't hit from there anyways. But he can... Not have line of sight. I'm gonna give haste to Eltamar. Oh, there's a dude. There's two more dudes. Holy crap, that guy's got a massive gun. Okay, that's worrying. I don't have a line of sight here to anyone. So I'm gonna reload. Hold off my turn. I need that. A wind dancer. Perfect. What's a wind blast do? A blast of wind. I mean, we can move up and try to shoot down that gun or the security captain, but he's got a lot of armor. I think I'd rather wait for the elevator to open. Can I overwatch? Okay, good. She can't overwatch apparently. She can shoot at that guy, but not very well. I should not have moved Dietrich there. The figure loping towards you is big, even for an orc. The majority of his body is sheathed in a suit of heavy, overlapping plates. What you can see of his face looks raw and slick like an old scar tissue stretched over, stretched tight over his skull. He wears an expression of supreme confidence. Alright friends, playtime's over. All of you Shadowrunners are the same. Skulking, sneaking, stealing a vase or two from the museum. No harm. Maybe I let you scamper away into the night. But now it's too late for that sort of generosity. Visitors aren't welcome down here. The gaping maw of the minigun jerks upwards, an impatient gesture loaded with malice. Drop your weapons and surrender. That's military-grade armor he's wearing, Ultimar, hardened against small arms fire. We'll have a tough time getting through it. I'm less concerned about the armor than I am about the minigun. Those things can tear a man in half. You have three seconds before I open the hose. Step out here and surrender, and I promise I'll make this easy. 
Something tells me you're going to kill us either way. True, I can't deny it, but it'd be much easier if you didn't fight back. The orc shrugs, and you hear the distinctive whir of his Vindicator's motor spinning up to speed. The barrels begin to blur as he wheels the weapon to face you. Oh dear. We're overwatching again with him. At least we have another turn. I'm going to move him back to cover and hope that he doesn't get mowed down instantly. Um... We managed to hit someone, at least. We need that door to open. Oh, I see. This is how many AP you can give it. We got three AP out of this thing. So, one movement. Oh, I missed. Come on, hit him. Yay! Minus, oh, minus zero AP, good. Alright, let's see what we can do. I'm still not in any line of sight, that's crazy to me. I guess keep overwatching? I'm gonna move my rest of my team back somewhere else. Or maybe not. Yeah, actually I am. Hoping this door will open soon. I kinda want that, those guys to come around the corner here. I'm gonna move you back further. Okay, it didn't break yet, which is nice. Even in, in plain sight, this guy has just tons of dodge. Hey, three damage. Eight damage. Yay, the door's open. We can leave. Or not, it just came through the door. We do have flashbang grenades. I wonder if I can reach him from here. Alright. Can we move up to here? This is full cover. Let's see if we can finish some of these guys off. Probably not gonna kill the security captain. Come on. Alright, finish that guy off. At the very least we can kill him. Alright, we need to move our main character up. He can't just be sitting back and doing nothing the entire time. He's got the best gun and the best chance to hit things. He said as he misses his shot. Um. We can't hit him from here. Or can we? Yes, we can. Please don't escape. I really could not survive that too well. Guy's almost dead. Oh, he healed. That's a no. Ow, that hurt. That also hurt. Yay, three damage. We need to heal Ultimar. Alright. More knife throwing. Good hit. Please don't escape. He's dead. The door unlocks with a loud click. Your escape route is clear. Oof. Okay. Go open the door. Everyone else get through. We'll 
we'll leave the uh, elemental to deal with that problem. Oh shit, there's more dudes. Well, there's nothing I can do about that guy right now. I just need to get into the room. No, we lost control of it. He's coming. Okay, that guy's dead. He's still- oh! Oh, they're still fighting in there. Even though we lost control, they're still fighting. But we can escape now. I think one free, two free, three free. Iger rises from her corpse strewn perch at your approach. From the look on her face, it's obvious that she's already sized up the situation. I knew this was going to happen. I fucking knew it. The run was a trap. Oh, it was, was it? Iger grits her teeth and shakes her head. We can talk about it later. For now, we gotta get the hell out of here. It's only a matter of time before more of them come pouring out that exit. She slaps the side of the van. Pile in, people. And Eltimer, when we get back to the Kutsu Bazaar, we're gonna have a little talk. The Kutsu Bazaar. Kutzburg, home to nearly half a million people and until very recently, Monica Schaefer. Once a melting pot of cultural diversity, it's now a chaotic mess of wealth and poverty, crime and commerce, anarchy and control. It's also home to your little slice of Berlin, a neighborhood that called, the locals called the Cruise Bazaar, a safe port in the eye of the storm. The ride back to the Cruise Bazaar is quiet. No one's in a talking mood. As the van veers past potholes and garbage piles, the glare of streetlights and neon signs plays across your window, painting the world in a kaleidoscope of garish colors. Soon the van rounds the corner and skids to a halt in a narrow, crumbling alley. This is as far as Berlin's chaotic streets will take you. Your team wordlessly debarks, or de yeah, debarks the vehicle and climbs down into a disused section of the U-Bahn tunnel system, a well-kept secret providing your team safe passage into the cruise bazaar. Your safe house waits on the other side. And the game has been auto-saved here, and this is as good a time as any to call it a video. Like always, if you have any suggestions or comments, please leave them below. Others, I'll see you all next time. Take care.